Hello guys, you are welcome to our mathematics lesson class. So today I will be teaching you about another statistical tool, the bar chart, and of course the histogram. Remember when I introduced data collection, presentation and interpretation, I told you that one of the tools that we use in interpreting data is bar chart and I explained that histogram okay is also interpreted in the same way as we handle bar chart so you know what in this class today I'll be teaching you about bar chart the way we are going to interpret the information on the bar chart take note is exactly the way you handle histogram so the bar chart you are going to see could have been a histogram are you ready? Alright, um, from our previous classes under data collection, interpretation and analysis, you remember I've already taught you how you can handle problems using frequency table and then how you can interpret what you have in that frequency table. Now, I present to you this bar chart. So take a look at it please. You can see this bar chart clearly. Wow. Now this bar chart shows us the number of girls in different classes. Now if you look at the vertical line of the bar chart, you will notice that you have number of girls in class. Okay? And then the horizontal line, the horizontal line, this one, okay? The horizontal line. You will notice that we have the classes, class 5, class 6, class 7, class 8, and of course, class 9. So, the vertical line of a bar chart or of a histogram simply tells us about the frequency. Tells us about the what? Frequencies. Is that okay? And then here, the frequencies simply represent the number of girls in the classes that we have on the horizontal line. So remember, if you are to draw this bar chart, you should remember that the vertical line represents the frequency or the number of items you are dealing with. And then the horizontal line, of course, is the item of interest. Here, we are talking about the classes. And so the vertical, the number of girls in the different classes from class 5 to class 9. We are not going to waste time, okay? This is going to be a fast and, of course, a sweet class, as always, huh? It's going to be an interesting class. Why I say we are not going to waste time is because we have learned a lot already on how to gather data. In fact, the important things in data collection, interpretation, and presentation, I have already taught you that in past classes, how to collect your data, how to get their frequencies, and how to interpret them. So, this bar chart that you have, we are going to use it to answer the following questions. This is just about the number of girls in some classes. We are going to answer the following questions. What are the questions? Follow along as I read the questions, okay? Number one, which class has the highest number of girls? Number two, how many girls are in class seven? Number three, in which class are there 30 girls? Number four, how many are the girls in class nine? More than the girls in class seven. Question number five, what is the total number of girls in class five and class eight all together? Question six, what is the total frequency as shown in the bar chart? Remember I told you that Frequency is the number shown on the vertical line. Are you getting me? We call it vertical axis or y axis. If you look at this bar chart very well, you would see on that line that is standing, that vertical, on top of it is written y. We call it y axis. Then the horizontal one is called x axis. Are you following, right? So we are asked what is the total frequency as shown in the bar chart? Question number seven. What is the frequency of girls in class 6? And then, question number 8. 
what is the percentage frequency of number of girls in class 6? So these are the 8 questions we are going to answer using this bar chart. Are you ready? So let us see how we interpret the bar chart. It's very simple. First of all, remember, in the diagram you are seeing there, the bar chart. The vertical bars, okay, the lines drawn this way that are standing, okay, those rectangular bars, those rectangles that are standing, they represent the value of the frequencies. So if you want to answer any question, just go there, and then from the height, the height of the rectangular bars you are seeing there in that bar chart, their height represents the frequencies or the number of girls in a particular class. Get your book ready as we put down our answers, okay? Get your book ready. So we go on to question number one. What class has the highest number of girls? So what do we do? It's simple. Now go to the bar chart. I see the bar chart. How do we get the, the, the class that has the highest number of girls? Quickly look at the rectangular bar. Which one is the highest? Or simply, which one is the tallest? So you're seeing that bar chart now. Good. The tallest bar is that one in class 9. Now if you look at it, let us trace from the top now, from the top of that class 9 bar. Let us take that line to the vertical axis now, to the y-axis. If you look at it, it has been traced with that red line, okay, dotted line that traced it. And you will notice that class 9 has 40 girls in it. Class 9 has what? 40 girls in it. Which simply shows that there are 40 girls in class 9. Let us move on to question number 2. How many girls are in class 7? We are going to do the same thing. Let us go to our bar chart. Then we will check the rectangular bar representing class 7. Are you there? Now let us look at the top, the height. From that height, we will take it to the y-axis. Watch as I trace the line there. Good. You will notice that in class 7, when the line was traced, it gave us 20 on the y-axis. So the number of girls in class 7 is 20. Is that okay? We move on to question number 3. In which class are there 30 girls? In which class are there 30 girls? How do we answer this question? Still very simple. Now go to the y-axis, the vertical line. Check where you have 30 there. Check where you have 30. Good. Then from that 30, let us trace the horizontal line and see the top. And see the top of the rectangular bar it is going to touch. Now, Look at the tracing there. The dotted red line is checking it for us. Now, the tracing shows that in class 5, there are 30 girls. Because when you drew that dotted line, look at it, it came to the top of the rectangular bar of class 5. So it means that there are 30 girls in class 5. Let's move on to question number 4. How many are the girls in class 9? more than the girls in class 7. Once again, how do we answer the question? We visit our bar chart. We are looking for the number of girls in class 9 more than the number of girls in class 7. So it is simple. Let us find out how many girls we have in class 9. We will also find out how many girls we have in class 7. Then we will do subtraction. We will do the bigger minus the smaller. To get the number of girls in class 9 more than the number of girls in class 7. Are you ready? Now we will locate the rectangular bar representing class 9. I hope you're seeing that right. Now you notice that in class 9 already from question number 1 we found out that there are 40 girls there. There are what? 40 girls. And so what we are going to do is to find out how many girls we have in class 7. So once again, go to class 7, the rectangular bar. You can see the tracing. 
to the y axis. And in class 7, you see clearly that we have 20 girls. Already, question number 2 has the answer for us, you know. Therefore, we are going to do number of girls in class 9, which is 40, minus number of girls in class 7, which is 20. So, 40 minus 20 will give us what? 20. It therefore means that there are 20 girls in class 9 more than the number of girls in class 7. So, class 9 has 20 more girls than the number of girls in class 7. Are you following what I'm explaining, right? We are interpreting our questions from this bar chart. That is why we say that bar chart is also a statistical tool used for data interpretation and, of course, presentation. Question number five. What is the total number of girls in class five and class eight all together? So you know what to do already, right? Total number of girls in class five and class eight all together. What we need to do is simple. Go to class five. How many girls are there? Go to class eight. How many girls are there? And then add the number of girls together. So let's find out. In class five, if you look at the rectangular bar of class 5 in this bar chart, you notice that if you trace it to the y-axis, to the frequency, to the vertical line, where you have the number of girls, okay? In class 5, we have 30 girls there. So take note, 30 girls in class 5. Then class 8, let us check the rectangular bar for class 8. How many girls? Let's trace it now, watch the tracing to the vertical axis. Good. It gave us 25. So there are 25 girls in class 8. Class 5, 30 girls. Class 8, 25 girls. So we are going to add the two together to get the number of girls in class 5 and class 8 all together. So it's going to be 30 plus 25. And 30 plus 25 will give us 55. Therefore, there are 55 girls all together in class 5 and class 8. Question number 6. What is the total frequency as shown in the bar chart? Hmm, total frequency. How do we get that? Remember, I told you that the frequency are the numbers written on the vertical axis. On that y axis. Is that okay? Here we have number of gears. That number of gears represents our frequency. So, this is what we are going to do to get the total frequency. It is the same as somebody asking you to get the total number of gears in the classes mentioned. That is class 5, class 6, class 7, class 8, and class 9. Get total frequency is the same as get the total number of girls from class 5 to class 9. So are you ready for that? To answer the question, we will visit our bar chart again. Then, we will go to each of the classes, check the rectangular bar, the height. From the height, we will take it to the vertical line. Each of the rectangular bar for the class, from the height, we are going to draw, do a tracing dot 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 to the vertical line and get the number of gears there. We, we're going to do it for each of the rectangular bar. We are going to do it for each of the rectangular what? Bar. Then we'll add everything together. Are you ready? So let us go to the rectangular bar for class 5. Class 5. The rectangular bar, if you check the tracing, that is 30 girls there. So we have 30 there. Take note of that. Then class 6. We have 35 there. Class 7, we have 20 girls. Alright. Class 8, we have 25 girls. Class 9, we have 40 girls. So we're going to add all these numbers. Are you ready? So let us add them and see. It is going to be 30 plus 35 plus 20 plus 25 plus 40. This is going to give us 150. 
So from class 5 down to class 9, the number of gears altogether there is 150. And that is the total frequency. Do you understand that? Remember, we went to the height, the top of each rectangular bar. And then we traced it. That, 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 that. To the vertical line. Where we have the number of gears. Because that represents the frequencies. And then we added what we got for each rectangular bar. That gave us 150. 50. That is the total frequency. Let us move on to question number 7. What is the frequency of girls in class 6? Good. Let's go to our bar chart. Then check the rectangular bar for class 6. Now if you check the rectangular bar for class 6, you will notice that there are 35 girls there. From the top, you trace it. So, it gave us 35. So there are 35 girls in class 6. And that is the frequency, the number of girls in class 6. Question number 8. What is the percentage frequency of number of girls in class 6? Percentage frequency. Good. I like this question. Remember, in our previous class, when we treated that of frequency table, there was a question we solved about probability. You know, when we visited Mr. Soso and So Fan, probability that if you dip your hand into the fruit bag, the fruit you're going to select is going to be watermelon. You still remember that, right? Good. This time around, we are going to learn something new how to calculate percentage frequency. Are you there? Good. So, what is the percentage frequency of number of girls in class 6? The answer is simple. It's going to be the number of girls in class 6 divided by total number of girls in all the classes and then we multiply it by 100. Number of girls in class 6, we had it already to be 35. So, we are going to do 35 divided by 150 and then we multiply it by 100 if you do the reduction you'll notice that your answer is going to be 23 whole number 1 over 3 percent if you solve 35 over 150 times 100 do that and see that 35 so, uh, 5 can divide it you get 7 5 can divide 150, you will get 30. So we're going to get 7 over 30 times 100. That over 30, 30 ended with 0, so cancel that last 0 there. Go to 100, cancel the last 0 in 100. So you'll be left with 7 times 10 over 3. 7 times 10 is 70, divided by 3. Now, 70 over 3, you can do short division to get your answer. To get that 23 whole number, 1 over 3 percent. Now, how do you do that? 3 can divide 7. How many times? From multiplication table, you'll find out that 3 can divide 7 2 times. The remainder will be 1. So, attach that 1 to the 0 in 7 till you get 10. 3 can go into 10. How many times? 3 times. So you see we have gotten 23, 2 from 7, 3 from 10. So you have 23. There is going to be a remainder because 3 cannot divide 10 completely. It's going to be remainder 1. So what do you do to the remainder? There is no number there to attach the remainder again. So that remainder 1, attach 0 to it. You get 10. Are you following? So if you want to get your answer in decimal, you have gotten 23 already. So it's going to be 23 points. That remainder 1, attach 0 to it, you get 10. 10 divided by the denominator 3 will give you 3. If you do that calculation, you actually get 23.33%. That 23.33% is still the same as 23 whole number 1 over 3. Remember, when you divided 70 by 3, 
7 by 3 first, 2 times mean the 1. Attach the 1 to 0, you got 10. 3 divide 10, 3 times. So that gives us 23. Remain the 1. No number to attach the 1 again. If you want to get your answer in mixed fraction, it's going to be remain the 1 over that denominator 3, which means that the percentage of the number of girls in class 6 will be 23 whole number, 1 over 3%, or in decimal, it is going to be 23.33%. So you see how we have explained everything and interpreted this bar chart. And that is how simple we handle that. What you have learned now is the same way we handle histogram. So having learned this one, you don't have problem if the chart were to be a histogram. Alright, I hope you learned something wonderful from this uh, class on bar charts. In our next class, I'll be teaching you about pie charts. Pie chart, okay? Get ready for that next class. But before then, make sure you watch this video again, again and again. Make your notes from this video. Alright?